Okay. Welcome everyone to Tuesday night. This is um, kind of the second degree of flow for the week. Similar theme, we'll be doing some heart opening and shoulder work, a little bit of extra stuff. Um, last night we did the one hour flow version. This is the more 60 to 75 minute, a little bit more in depth version of the class. You don't have to take them all during the week. They stand alone just fine, but just following through on the theme, a little bit of shoulder work today. So for class, you will need something that's similar to a block. It doesn't have to be a block. It can be a firm pillow, something you can squeeze between your arms that isn't too narrow. You want it to be about shoulder width apart. Um, block works great. And also a strap or some type of belt that you can hold up overhead between your arms. It doesn't have to be a yoga strap. It can be just something similar like that, maybe just a belt. But we will be starting off with both of these props. But first, just find your comfortable seat. You can sit cross-legged or kneeling. I like to do all this kneeling, but that's really up to you. What's ever is more comfortable for your legs and for your hips. But just give yourself a couple moments just to settle back into your seat. Start to feel your breath. Finding the center of gravity in your body, noticing if you're a little bit leaning off to one side or the other, maybe shifted a little forward or backwards. And just allowing yourself to find a little bit more center position. Shoulders right back over the hips, nice and long along the spine, a little draw into the belly. And just relax your shoulders and breathe. And as you start to deepen and smooth out your breath, just start to witness the effect of the breath on your entire shoulder girdle. So as you inhale, it may lift a little and spread a little bit wider. And as you exhale, maybe it softens down. Try not to let it round forward too much. Just gentle spreading open as you breathe in and a gentle contraction and relaxation as you exhale. Really taking your time to fill all the way up. Really feel the spread of the upper ribs under the shoulders. And softly exhale everything out. And then just continuing with this deep, smooth breath. Reach out for your belt or your strap. Whatever you have handy. We're going to open it wide enough that you can hold it up overhead a little bit wider than the shoulders to start. Depending on your flexibility, some of you may be able to bring the hands pretty close together, but give yourself a little bit of slack to start. Pulling a little tighter into the strap, giving yourself a little bit more space, and just start to bring the arms back until, until you feel a little resistance across the front of your shoulders and chest. And just breathe into this position here, relax the head, almost hanging into the stretch. You can shift a little bit subtly side to side. But if you're moving through the stretch, think about it a deliberate shift through the sensation rather than a fidgeting kind of escape from the sensation. So continuing to watch and witness the breath. And then come back to center and keeping a little tension into the strap. So you're pressing the hands out into the strap lightly, bring the strap down in front of you, let the chest lift, shoulders draw back, pull out on the strap. And then as you come up and back, you have two options. If it's okay with the shoulders to keep the arms straight and bring them all the way down, you can do this full circle as we start to breathe back and forth. 
If that doesn't work for the joints, especially elbows or wrists, instead of keeping the arms straight, just bend your elbows and pull the elbows back, opening chest, and then you'll straighten the arms and bring them down. So everyone bringing the arms back and forth, just when you bring them back, you can either choose to keep the arms straight or let them bend. Not really worrying about getting the deepest stretch, but think of trying to get a nice smooth motion back and forth. Try not to slow down or rush through, especially at that tight point in the upper back. After a couple of rounds, you may find that you can bring the hands a little closer together as it opens up quickly. For some of you, it might not open up that quickly, so you can keep at the same distance or even bring the hands further apart. The next time you bring it up overhead, keeping the arms straight and the strap tight in between the hands, just start to bring your arms back and forth. So a little bit behind the head, so eventually you could bring your upper arm maybe behind the head as you go side to side. Pulling on the strap, trying not to side bend too much through the torso, really make this about the arms and the shoulders. Then you may need to bring the hands closer together on the strap for this next one. It's still going side to side, but this time bending your top arm as you get to the side and then straightening up through center and bending the other arm. And just move, move smoothly back and forth a couple times. Then we'll add a little bit of isometric pull. So the next time you come off to the left, pause. Try to pull with the upper arm with, while resisting through the lower arm. So you're adding a little extra pull but not letting it move, isometric. And then over through to the other side and do the same thing, pulling into the strap. And then over to the other side. Imagine you could bring that top elbow over to the right-hand side of the room and then back through center to the other side. Just a couple more times, just adding that little bit of extra resistance. And then release and just set the strap aside for now. You might use it towards the end of class again, but for now, just leave it out of your way and grab a hold of one of your blocks. Go ahead and put the block between your forearms. Palms face each other, fingers spread nice and wide, and lift the elbows up to shoulder height. Draw the shoulder blades down, hug your belly and mid-ribs in, squeeze your block, and press the elbow tips forward. Hug the belly in, so you're trying to keep a neutral spine here. Don't let yourself arch or extend through the back. Lift the fingertips a couple inches towards the ceiling. Squeeze the block, press the elbows forward, hug the mid-ribs back. Again, lift the fingertips a couple more inches, squeeze the block, press the elbows forward, hug mid-ribs in, tuck the tail a little bit. Again, lift straight up a couple inches, squeeze into the block, squeezing mostly between the elbows, press them forward. Then we're going to pulse a gentle squeeze between the forearms with a press forward of the elbows for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, and release. The block down to the lap, roll the shoulders out. That's usually the point where my students all groan in class. I miss those groans. So if you could record yourselves groaning and just send it to me on email. <laughs> Second one, bring the block between the hands, holding it by squeezing your palms, not by gripping it with the fingers. And just bring the block straight up overhead. Squeeze the block between the palms, trying to send it towards the ceiling, but still maintain the neutral position in the spine. It's a little tuck, pull in, squeeze the block, and do your best to send the block straight back behind you. Squeeze it, hug the midribs and belly in, send the block back, squeeze it up towards the ceiling, hug the midribs in, and then pulse the squeeze between your palms for 10, 9, 
eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And bring the block down, roll the neck out. It's hard to keep that one out of the neck. We just have one more position. One more time, grip the block, just as we started before, block straight up. This time, bend the elbows, but just to 90 degrees. And check and make sure you don't want the block down by your shoulders, so your forearms are parallel to the ceiling. Squeeze the block between the palms, and then draw the elbows in towards each other. Hug the mid ribs in without back bending, so that means no arching the upper back. Start to send the block straight back. Squeeze the elbows in. Hug the mid ribs in. Send the block straight back. Squeeze the elbows in. Hug the mid ribs in. Squeeze. Try to send it back. Then we'll pulse the squeeze between the elbows and hands for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, and let it go. Set the block to the side for now. Roll the shoulders out, roll the hands out, shake it out. And then sit back and bring your feet out in front of you. Turn the fingertips to face forward, spread the hands nice and wide, shoulder width, feet about hips width, and just take reverse tabletop. Lengthen out through the tailbone, lift up through the upper chest. You can shift a little forward and backwards, a little side to side. If that bothers the wrist, keep your hips a little lower and your weight a little further back. Don't worry about the height of the hips. Think of lifting the space between the collarbones and the upper chest. Maintain the deep breath. And then go ahead, set the hips down, cross your ankles, and come over onto your hands and knees into a downward facing tabletop. Fingers spread nice and wide under the shoulders, knees as wide as the hips, and just give yourself a few rounds of cat cow. Just moving all the way up and down the spine, tailbone to neck. And since we are focusing a little more on the shoulders and chest today, just think about the movement in the upper back and the chest. So don't worry too much about the tuck and the tilt of the tailbone. But as you inhale, really draw the shoulder blades back as you look forward slightly. And as you exhale, push the ground away, protract the shoulder blades away from each other. And just drawing back and forth. And then set your hands up, spread the fingers nice and wide, palms based into the floor, tuck your toes, and press back to downward facing dog. Give yourself a few breaths to pedal out your downward facing dog. Shifting a little side to side, a little forward and backwards through the hips. And then slowly start to walk your feet up to the hands. Once you get to the front, so let yourself hang with bent knees down over the legs in a rag doll. Hands can either be lightly on the ground, or if you grab opposite elbows, relax your head, and just let the upper body spill forward. Think of telescoping the ribs apart, just letting the upper body get really heavy. Then release your arms and slowly start to round your way up to standing. Reach the arms up overhead, lengthen out. And exhale, hands to heart, feet together at the front of your mat. Surya Namaskar. Sit back into chair pose, bend your knees, reach the arms up, take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, forward fold. Lengthen out to your flat back and just step back to plank for this first one. 
Feel the push of the arms coming from the middle of your upper back around the sides of the shoulders, getting into serratus at the sides of the ribs. Pull yourself forward a couple inches, bend your elbows, come halfway down, watch your water bottles. <laughs> Inhale from chaturanga to upward dog. Exhale back, downward facing dog. From here, lift your right leg and step forward inside your right thumb, coming up for warrior one. You can either set the back heel down on the ground if that works for your leg, or you can keep the heel up and bend the knee a little bit in a high lunge. If it works to find your warrior one though, use that back leg, send the hips forward, but think about sending the hips underneath you as they come forward. And then interlace your hands behind you, roll your chest open, and bow forward for your humble warrior. Don't worry about how low you get. Keep your hips centered. And just think about lifting the arms up and doing your best to keep as much of the hands together as you can. It's okay if they separate a little bit. Just make sure that both wrists bend if either one does. Inhale back up to warrior one. Bring your hands together at the heart. Draw the shoulders back. Look forward. Lift yourself up onto your front leg for a digasana or warrior three. Turn that left thigh towards the ground. You can bend the standing knee if you need to. Hug the belly in, shoulders cap back. Lightly land in your warrior one, deep breath in. And exhale, hands down, step back and come forward as you lower to chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog. From here, lift your left leg. And step forward for warrior one on the second side. Adjusting the back leg into your lunge or your warrior, whichever works better. Again, send your weight underneath you as it comes forward. Interlace. Roll open. And bow forward. Humble warrior. Lift yourself up, bring your hands to your heart, find a focal point for your balance, and pull yourself up into the air for your warrior three. Wrapping the right thigh, hug the belly in, cap the shoulders down from the neck. Lightly land in your warrior, deep breath in, and then exhale into your vinyasa. Lower halfway, inhale to your back bend, and exhale back to downward facing dog. Just a couple breaths in your downward facing dog. And then soften, look forward and hopper step to the hands, lengthen out and fold. Bend your knees, sitting back through chair, and stand up hands to heart. Again, chair pose, one breath in, and exhale, fold forward. Lengthen out, and step or float your way back. Low push-up, upward facing dog, and back to downward facing dog. From here, lift your right leg, and step to center between the thumbs. As you lift up, open to your warrior two. This should be fairly safe for everyone's back leg, but you can adjust the width of the legs if you need to. Reach the arms out, draw the shoulders back. Then as you really reach your front arm forward, let your head drop back. As the front hand comes a little bit closer and closer towards that front knee, getting a stretch for the side of the shoulder and neck, maybe bring your left arm up over the head and lightly encourage the stretch for the neck don't pull too hard on your head. Keep the chest nice and open. Gently release. Look forward. Turn your front palm to the sky. Flying warrior, pull yourself up. Keep the hips open as you lift that back leg into the air. Trying your best to find your balance, unlike me. Spiral the arms away from each other. Open that front palm up. 
and then lightly, carefully land back down. Reverse your warrior. And vinyasa, spin the hands to the ground, step back smoothly, lower through. Feel the lift and pull back, downward dog. Lift your left leg and step forward for warrior two on the second side. Opening out to your right, soften the shoulders, level the hips. And again, as you reach forward through your left fingertips, drop your right ear back towards the right shoulder. You can start to bring that front hand closer down towards the front knee. Maybe your back hand comes up overhead. Gently encourage that stretch to the side of the neck. Keep the chest open. Remember, it's not a strong pull with the arm, just a little gentle weight. And then release, coming up to your warrior two. Turn your front palm towards the sky, spread it open, look forward. Pull yourself up into the air for your flying warrior, spiraling the arms apart. Gently land in your warrior two, reverse it, right hand back, left arm lifts, and then vinyasa. Spin the hands down, step back, and lower. Breathing open, and empty back to your downward dog. Again, give yourself a couple breaths in your downward dog. Feel that nice spread across the base knuckles of your fingers, tops of the palms spread wide, and sides of your waist lengthening back. Then soften and step or float forward. Lengthen and fold. Bend your knees, sitting back into chair, and stand up, hands to heart. Again through, sit back into chair pose, Utkatasana, keep the knees a little apart, and then exhale, fold. Lengthen, and take your vinyasa back to downward dog. From here, lift your right leg, step forward, and come up into a high lunge. So everyone keep your back heel up, soften the back knee, drop the tailbone a little bit, turn that left hip to face forward so you're lengthening out. Stay nice and low. Wrap your left elbow over the right. For eagle, either just grab opposite shoulders or twine the arms. Lifting the elbows up, hug the belly in, press the elbows forward just like we did with the block at the beginning. <laughs> Catching your balance. And then keep whatever bind of the arms you have, but draw them down so you can look forward for your balance. Lean forward, pull your back knee up, tap the elbows with the knee, squeeze them into each other. Step it back, high lunge, lift the arms, deep breath, and then exhale the hands down, step back and lower. Inhale, open, exhale up and back. Left leg lifts up and steps forward into your high lunge. Lift the arms, lengthen the tail, hug the low belly in, bending the back knee. And then it's right elbow over the left. Either twine or grab shoulders. Press the elbows forward, lift them up. Try not to arch too much into your back. Keep the clasp, bring the arms down so you can find a focal point for balance. Shift forward, draw that back knee up, squeeze elbows and knee together. Send it back into your high lunge. And vinyasa. Again, downward dog for a couple breaths. Tapping the shoulders in, getting that nice wrap to the upper arms. Heels splaying a little bit apart. And then with your next breath, soften. 
and make your way forward through your flat back into your fold. Up through chair, bend your knees, reach up, and stand up hands to heart. Now from standing at the front of your mat, have a focal point. We're gonna do a couple balancing postures. So shift your weight onto your right foot. We'll just start in tree. So bring your left foot up. It can be anywhere on the inner leg. Hands to heart. Draw the belly in, open the chest back, shoulder blades draw back a bit. Work the thigh into the foot. Maybe extend the arms out. Maybe float the left hand down towards the thigh, lifting your right arm up, coming into a side bending tree. And as you come back up to center, bring your hands to the heart. Step that left foot down, bending both knees into chair pose. Come right into a twist, right elbow over left thigh. As you twist the chest to the left, make sure your knees aren't collapsing together. Even if your right knee needs to sneak forward, that's okay. Just don't let them collapse inwards. Draw the shoulders back as you lift the center of your chest towards the thumbs. Shift your weight back into your heels. and look down, lift that left heel up, slowly start to stand up, pushing the knee up into the elbows. Once you're up, release, bring your right hand to the knee, left hand reaches behind you, coming into a standing twist. Open that left shoulder, you can even turn that back palm up towards the sky. And then come back to center and set it down for the second side. Find your balance point and step your right foot up onto the left thigh or left shin. Lift up, hug the belly in, find neutral spine. Maybe spread the arms. Maybe start to float that right arm down, lifting the left arm up into your side bending tree. And then as we come out, we're going to set that right foot down and cross the left elbow over that knee, sitting back into twisting chair to the right. So coming through center, foot goes down, bend both knees, cross left elbow over right thigh, and work your twist. Sit your weight back, spread your toes, don't collapse the legs together. Look down. Lift that right heel. Push your right knee up into the elbow as you stand up. Once you're up, you can release left hand to the knee, right hand reaches behind you, open the chest. Maybe turn that back palm up towards the sky. And then release back to center and just shake it out. And then from the front of the mat, feet together, hands to heart. Vinyasa, reach up, inhale, exhale, fold forward. Lengthen to your flat back, and then step or float back to your chaturanga. Inhale up, exhale back to downward dog. Now in this downward facing dog, keep the hips reaching back, trying to keep more weight in the heels, even if you need to bend the knees. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, dip the elbows halfway to the mat, squeeze them in. Remember that feeling of having the block between the forearms at the very beginning. Inhale, re-straighten the arms, deep breath. Exhale, dip the elbows halfway down, squeeze them in towards each other, keep the thumb pads on the ground. Re-straighten the arms, inhale. Exhale, dip the elbows, squeeze them in, palms nice and wide but flat, and lift up. Two more times, bend the elbows, dip them down, hover them above the mat, squeeze them in as narrow as your wrists. Inhale, reach up. One more time, dip the elbows down, squeeze them in, relax your head and neck. 
Inhale to Downward Facing Dog. And exhale here. Soften the knees. And hopper step forward. Flat back and fold. Inhale all the way to stand. And hands to heart. Again, reach up and fold forward. Lengthen and step or float back. Low push up to upward dog and back to your downward facing dog. From this downward facing dog, you may need to bring the knees to the ground first, so take it with a grain of salt, but squeezing the elbows in, can you bring them all the way down to the floor, right into dolphin, trying it at the same time. Once you're in, step your feet way back, get the shoulders right over your elbows, coming into forearm plank. Press down into your elbows, again, like we did with the blocks at the beginning of the class, Hug the chest away from the floor, tuck tailbone, firm up your belly, and sustain this pose. Feel a little pull of your elbows back towards the feet, so cap the shoulders down onto the tops of the ribs. If you don't feel much in the core, you can walk your feet back a little bit. And then walk the feet all the way back in. If you need the knees down to come back to downward dog, do so. Otherwise, at the same time, squeeze in, lift your elbows, downward dog, take a breath, and let it out. Soften and hopper step forward, flat back and fold. Inhale to stand and hands to heart. And one more variation reach up, inhale. Exhale as you dive. Flat back. And your vinyasa. Again, we're coming down into your forearm plank. So you may need to make sure you're closer to the front of your mat. Squeeze the elbows in. Lower them down to the floor. Step your feet back. Coming into your forearm plank. Bring your right hand just an inch or two to center. Don't overdo that angle. Heels to the right. Reach your left arm up. Coming into your forearm side plank. Pull that bottom arm towards you. Feel the shoulder strengthen down into the rib cage as you lift the hips up. Back to center on both arms. Control the motions, don't just fall into the second side. Bring your left hand just a little to center for balance. Heels to the left, reach your right arm up. Strengthen that bottom side to lift the hips up and breathe. Bring it back to center, walk your feet in. Squeeze the elbows in, lift them up. Take a breath in your downward dog. And a full exhale. Soften the knees. And hopper, step forward, flat back. Fold down. Inhale all the way up. And hands to heart. Now from standing, just step out into a narrow straddle facing the side. If you don't have the room, you can step out side to side as long as your feet aren't going to slip on whatever surface is next to your mat. Toes out, heels in, but not all the way. Keep a nice angle of the legs. Bend your knees coming into your supported horse stance. And we're going to take a twist, and this is just as much for the shoulders as it is for the groin. You may feel the stretch all the way down into the lat where it kind of crosses over the bottom of the shoulder blade. So let your right shoulder lift and dip forward. You're not just bending the arm. Try to keep it straight. Wrap the right shoulder in and gently traction the thigh away. Pull it back into place. Lift your left shoulder. Wrap it forward. Again, maybe feel it a little bit in your mid side of the back. Again, pull it back to center, lift your right shoulder, dip the right shoulder down, traction the right thigh away. Pull it back and wrap the other one forward. Now 
Come back to center, straighten the legs for a moment. And we're gonna do a little strengthening for the upper back. So staying upright with the spine, toes still out, bend your knees coming back into horse stance, but stay more upright. Keep your arms relaxed down by the insides of the thighs. And then this is all for the upper back and for the shoulders. Inhale to lift the shoulders up, squeeze them straight back. And as you exhale, pull that squeeze down the back like you're pulling a golf ball down along the spine. Inhale, release. Exhale, middle shoulder blades pull straight back. Try to pull that squeeze down a little. And then inhale to relax, bend your arms. As you exhale, try to touch the elbow tips behind you. Pull that down, squeeze in. Inhale, relax. We'll do that all one more time. Lift the shoulders, pull them straight back. And as you exhale, pull the squeeze down. Inhale to relax. Exhale, middle shoulder blades straight back. Try to pull that squeeze down. Inhale, relax, but bend the arms. Exhale, try to touch the elbow tips behind you. Pull that squeeze down. And then relax, straighten the legs. If you need to, you can widen the legs. Turn the toes a little bit in, heels out, so the outer edges of your feet are more or less parallel, hips straight forward. Coming into a forward fold. So we're either just gonna take a forward fold, hands to the ground, or if it works for you, and you could judge by how well you did with Humble Warrior, you can interlace your hands behind you, open your chest, and bow forward into your fold. However, if you need the support for your back or your knees and hamstrings, you can just release your hands to the ground and take the forward fold that way. And then breathe your way all the way back up. Release the arms, shake it out. And then step to the front of the mat. Another standing sequence. Bend your knees, sit back into your chair, take a deep breath. And as you exhale, fold forward. Flat back to lengthen. And step or float back right into your low push up. So upward facing. And back into your downward facing dog. From here, lift your right leg. Return to warrior two. So step to the midline, lift up, open to your left. Level the hips. Now turn your right toes slightly in. So it's not fully warrior two. You can bend the back knee a little bit too. Interlace your hands behind your back. Turn your chest at an angle to the upper left. So this is kind of humble warrior two or ostrich pose. You're not trying to drop over the front thigh. It's almost like you're trying to dip your head into the sand. And for this one, you can stick your hips back. So turn your front toes in as much as you need to. Open the chest, bow forward, and dip the head down towards the floor. Bring yourself back up into your warrior two. Reverse. As you straighten the front leg, pivot your toes to the left, bend into your left knee, coming into your drop stance. Either on the elbow, watch that shoulder, dropping down a little bit further. If you're past the shin, you can either open the arms and work a little open twist, or some of you can even bind around that back knee. But keep that top shoulder rolling open. Breathe fully into the pose. Then look forward. As you release the arms, shift your weight to the front foot, pivot around to the right, drop the hands, bring your back knee down, lean into your left hand for a twisting quad stretch to the right, walk your right foot out, and either just twist with your hand on the inner thigh or reach back to grab the back foot in your right hand and draw it in. Still watch that sneaky left shoulder lift up out of the left side of your chest and draw that left tricep towards the side of your ribs. 
So you're engaging this underneath side to support yourself. And gently let that go, square off. You might want blocks for this next pose on either side of that front foot. Just depends on your flexibility and your comfort. Step the back foot a little bit closer so you can straighten both legs, shift your weight back into the heels, pull that right hip back for pyramid or parsvottanasana. Lengthen out, keep your weight back in your heels, and carefully fold over that front leg. Come up to your flat back, bring your left hand closer to the foot, maybe higher on a block. For some of you, you might bring it to the outside of the foot, that's really up to you. Keeping your right hip behind the right heel, start to twist the chest open, reaching your right arm to the sky. Spread those upper fingers, draw both shoulders down away from the neck as you lift through the chest. Release that right hand to the ground. Move your blocks out of the way, bend your knees. Step your back foot closer and bring your hands out in front of you, a good few inches in front of the line of your front toes. Lift that back leg up into the air and take a little mini standing split. You can keep both knees bent, that part isn't that important, but make sure your hands don't walk back towards the standing foot. Keep them forward out in front of you. Spread the palms. Take a deep breath, drop your weight back into that right heel. And then as you exhale, lean forward, lift your right heel, but push the ground away and hollow the belly in. Inhale back onto the heel, soften back. Exhale, rock forward, push the ground away, drop your head, belly in. Again, drop back, inhale. Maybe on this exhale, you can lean forward, push the ground away, you can hop the right foot up, maybe a couple hops, maybe a little bit of a float. Drop back onto the heel. One more time, exhale, maybe float it up. Maybe lift, and then drop it down, step back, and chaturanga. Inhale, forward facing, exhale back, downward facing dog. Lift your left leg, and step into your warrior two on the second side, open out to your right. Just feel your legs, level off the hips. Turn those front toes in a little bit. You may even need to shorten your stance or bend the back knee. Interlace your hands behind you. Aim the chest to the upper right corner and bow forward for your ostrich. Maybe the arms straighten, they don't have to. Just drop the head. You can allow the hips to shift backwards here so you're not necessarily coming close or that close to the inside of your front leg. Gently release back up, find your warrior two, reverse it. As you straighten the front leg, pivot your toes to the right, bend into your back knee. Again, you can support yourself on the shoulder, just keep, or on the elbow, keep that shoulder down. You can drop a little bit lower, hands to heart or open, or some of you can bind around the back knee. Deep breath. High up into the chest if you can. Then release. Shift your weight to the front foot. Plant your hands. Set that back knee down. Walk your left foot out. Twisting quad stretch to the left. Left hand comes to the inner thigh as you twist. Maybe reach your left hand back and draw the heel in. And again, watch that right shoulder Turn that right hand a little bit clockwise into the floor, drawing that right tricep back towards the ribs. Good. 
Then release that foot, square off. Maybe need your blocks under your hands again, setting up for that pyramid pose. Step your back foot close enough to ground both heels. As you shift your weight back, make sure you're not falling forward. Ground back into the heels, almost push them into the floor. Then pull your left hip back into place and fold over that front leg. Time for revolve triangle, come up, bring that right hand in, maybe higher on a block. Try to keep your left leg in line. So it's okay if you need to bend the back knee or reset the back foot, but try not to swivel both hips off to the side just to lift your left arm up. So keep that left hip behind the heel, adjust your right hand as much as you need to as you twist that left side open. And if you need to re readjust the width of your stance, you can readjust. And then bring that left hand down, bend your knees, walk your hands out in front of the foot, and lift that back leg into the air, bowing forward. This is that rocking back and forth a little bit. So as you inhale, drop your weight back, relax a little. And as you exhale, lean forward, lift your left heel, push through the arms. Inhale, drop back. Exhale, lean forward, pull the left heel up. Inhale, drop back. Exhale, lean forward. Maybe this time get a little bit of a hop, left heel to hip, drop back, inhale. Exhale, maybe get another little hop, maybe a little bit of a lift and a little bit of a balance. And then all the way back, take your vinyasa from chaturanga to up dog and back to downward dog. Couple breaths or maybe child's pose. Then from wherever you are, if you stayed in down dog or came to child, everyone come down. Walk your knees back and come onto the belly. I'm gonna do a little extra chest opener here on the floor. Those of you in class last night, we did this there. Those of you who've taken my class before in person, we do these kind of a lot. Does it feel really good if you can get the angles right? Just make sure that you've got enough room to bring your arms out to a T. So if you have props, just move them away. We're not gonna be moving much. You just need to be able to reach out. And then keep your left arm out to the side. Walk it just a couple inches forward. Don't overdo the forward reach. Just a little bit to increase the angle of the arm in the back. Look to your right. Bend your right elbow, plant your right hand on the floor. As you roll back onto your left hip, scoot the hips forward and bend your knees like you were in twisting chair but fell over and then pull the chest away from that left arm that's behind you and roll open. Your head may or may not be on the floor. Feel the stretch for this left side of your chest and the front of the shoulder. If you'd like to add a little bit for the spine, you can step that right foot behind you. But if that takes the emphasis out of the shoulder, then just bring the knees back together. And if you lifted, bring the knee in. Carefully straighten the legs as you come back onto the belly. And we'll just do that on the other side. So reach your right arm out. Walk it a couple inches higher than the line of your shoulder. Look to the left. Plant your left hand as you roll back onto your right side. Scoot your hips forward. Bend your knees. And pull the chest away from the hand that's behind you. You can even push that right hand, the one behind you, down into the floor and pull the chest away from it. Head on the floor or a little, little lifted. Left foot may sneak behind, but again, if that takes it more into the spine, less in the shoulder, then just bring the knees together and really work to pull up out of the right side of your chest. And 
one more deep breath in. And then as you let it go, just come back onto the belly, maybe shake it out. You bring your hands under your forehead. And we're gonna do a little strengthening for the upper back, which also helps open the chest. A little similar to what we did in horse stance. Just bring your arms out to cactus arms or field goal, so elbows bent out to the sides. This is not gonna be a deep back bend, so don't arch really far up off the floor. Keep your feet on the ground and separated. Just lift the chest enough to free the face so you can look down. Float the forearm straight up into the air so wrists and elbows both float up. So you're not lifting the chest, you're lifting the arms. Now we're gonna pulse the wing of the arms, forearms straight up, again, the chest stays still, it doesn't lift and lower, it's just the arms, squeezing back between the shoulder blades for 10, nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stay up, bring the hands forward into the middle fingers, touch elbow still bent like the x-ray machine at an airport. If we ever get to go to an airport again, lift up. Bring it back to center, elbows in line with shoulders, stay lifted, wrists up, and then bring the elbows back like they could touch behind you. Keep your wrists up, your, it's a little scooping sensation. Bring it back to center, squeeze middle shoulder blades, and then bring it forward, try to touch middle fingers overhead, keep the wrists up. One more time, keep it back to center, hug the belly in, tuck your tail. Then one more time, draw the elbows back, try to touch them, and then let it go. Roll your head a little side to side to release the neck. That can be hard to keep out of the neck. and then prop yourself up in your elbows. We're gonna come into a couple of variations of bow. If you don't have props, just take regular bow, reaching back to your ankles with your hands and gently lifting up, pressing your feet. If you have your straps still, and you have something that's like a blanket or a pillow or a small bolster, so it's just thick enough to give a little support to the lower ribs in the front. Not huge, you don't wanna be lifted into a deep back bend just from the bolster or the support, but enough to support your lower ribs here. Hips are still on the floor. Now grab a hold of your strap. If you had a regular belt and you don't have a yoga strap, this may not be long enough, or a regular belt might not be. So again, you can just bend the knees, grab your ankles with your hands and take regular bow. But if you can, with the strap, Hook the strap around the front of your ankles. You can flex the feet to hold it there. And then just bring each side of the strap over your shoulders. Now, if you're in regular bow, gently press and lift up. If you already lifted, only stay for a few breaths and then come back down and rest. If you're still with me with the strap, grab back on the strap a little bit. But then as you press your feet into the strap, do your best to reach the arms forward and straighten the arms. So this is more about the arms and chest than it is about the back bend. So it's trying to straighten the legs, trying to straighten the arms. Relax your neck. Work, keep the hands working in parallel with the shoulders. And then gently release. Let yourself rest down over the support that's under you. If it's too big, you can move yourself around And then you can repeat that, either regular bow or the straight arm, straight legs. Or once you come up, you can walk your hands down the strap closer to the feet and then do the same gentle pull of the feet pressing into the strap with your elbows bent. So it's somewhat similar to the sequence we did at the very beginning with the block between the elbows and the hands. So walking your hands a little bit back down the strap, doing your best to keep the elbows somewhat in. You can start to straighten the legs into the strap, keep the belly tight so you're not too much in your low back. Try to keep the elbows in, relax your neck. Again, more for the shoulders and serratus on the sides of the ribs than really a deep back bend. 
and then wherever you are, let it go. You can move the strap off to the side again, just for now. Maybe slide forward over the support so it's more in your low belly, helping you release your low back. And then just relax over it and breathe deep down into the belly. If you're in a larger bolster, it may feel a little nausea producing, so be careful with this. I'm going to try to soften the belly around the support. And gently come up onto the arms. Move whatever bolster, support, or blanket, whatever you had, out of the way. And come up onto your hands and knees, into your tabletop. Once you're there, give yourself a couple rounds of cat-cow, maybe even a little side-to-side. -side, just loosen things up again. And now we're going to come into dolphin. So if you have your block, you can always put it between your hands to keep them separated. Elbows are squeezing in, just like we did with the block kneeling or seated at the beginning. So don't let your elbows go wide. Keep them in. Tuck your toes and lift up into your dolphin. Pressing back through the hips. You're definitely not on the head. You're just in down dog with your elbows bent. Pressing back. Lift the hips. Lift the sit bones. Maybe bring your feet a little closer together. Maybe lift your right leg into the air. Push evenly into both elbows if you can. Keep the armpits cupped a little bit. And then gently switch legs. As you lift that left leg, the hip may open, but try not to let both hips fall off to the side. So keep your right hip in line with the heel. Even weight as much as possible across your shoulders. Lengthening back, telescope the ribs, lengthen the waist. Left leg down, knees down, and press back to child's pose. Maybe shift a little bit side to side, roll the head out. And then we have one more variation. I'm gonna offer two different options. If you had some success with that standing split, shift back and forth, a little bit of a hop without going chaotic or falling all over the place, you can try balancing from dolphin, one heel kicking into the hip, just like I had done in standing split. Don't think about both feet up into the air. That tends to throw your weight over the head forward. Just think about kicking that heel into the hip so one leg is straight, the other leg stays bent. That'll keep your weight back, so at worst you fall into child's pose. And remember, if you start to fall, just go limp. However, if you're not ready to lift up at all, what you can do is you won't be able to use the block. As you lift one leg, you lift the opposite elbow and find a balance on your fingertips. And then just figure out where in your core you need that contralateral strength to find your balance. That's if you're not going to balance fully. Let everyone set yourself up on your forearms, tuck your toes, lift up, walk your feet in, and lift your right leg into the air. Now, first option is to try to lift your left elbow, find a balance, be as light on the left fingertips as you can, or maybe walk your foot in a little bit and start to lightly kick your left heel to your left hip. Again, don't think about both legs up to the sky. Think about just trying your best to hollow the belly in. If you're on one arm, one leg, replace the elbow, replace the foot. Everyone coming down, taking just a moment of rest, and then we'll set up for the second side. Set your arms up. If your elbow slid out, bring them back in. Press up to your dolphin, and then left leg up. Again, maybe right elbow lifts coming onto right fingertips. Maybe walk in a little bit. Maybe get a little bit of a kick or a hop. Bringing yourself in, hollow the belly as much as possible. It can be really hard in this position. And then carefully bring it all the way down and rest in your child's pose.
and then carefully come back up and set up for pigeon. If you prefer figure four, just come onto your back and cross your right ankle over the left thigh, gently hug your left leg in. If you're coming into pigeon, just bring your right knee forward to the right wrist. Work whatever angle of the shin works for you in this pose. You can put a prop under your right hip. You can put a prop under the belly, between the belly and the shin. I like this because it keeps the lower back nice and long. And just shift back into your hips. Now, those of you at home, if you know the backbending version of pigeon, either taking the quad stretch coming up, reaching your left hand back, maybe even the king pigeon, feel free to do whatever you'd like in your practice here. It would fit with the sequence that we're doing. Otherwise, just stay in pigeon and enjoy the hip stretch. I'm just going to leave that to be your yogi's choice if you want more of chest opening, a little more shoulder opening. But you might be done with that, working towards rest. And keep a little awareness of your back foot if you're still in the forward version of the pose. And from wherever you are, gently come up. Shift onto your right hip. As you swing the back leg forward though, bend your left leg and straighten your right leg. So Janu side bends, but with the right leg straight, and left leg in. So it'll feel like we switched legs, but that's because I wanna come up and out of the left low back that may have been compressed in your pigeon. Bring your right hand or elbow to the inside of the leg, reach your left arm up and over the head as you twist open. And just breathe, lengthening out of the left side of your low back and hip. You can look any direction that works for the neck. But if you're looking down, make sure you're not collapsing the shoulders to follow your gaze. And then gently sit up, and we're just going to switch sides. So you can come back through downward dog, you can come through tabletop. If you took figure four, come onto your back, left ankle over right thigh. However you get there, just bring your left knee forward to the left wrist. Play with the angle of the shin that works on this side, maybe different than the first side. For me, this side is always a little tighter, so I don't go quite as deep. And maybe use your props. And settle into the pose. Once you've given yourself a couple breaths and just the hip stretch, if you did come up and reach your right hand back for the back foot, coming into your quad stretching pigeon or working towards king pigeon, again, really up to you. If you don't even know what that means, not today. I'm just offering it as an option because it would fit with the class flow at this point. And then from wherever you are, bring yourself up. But again, as you swing that back leg forward, straighten your left leg, bend the right one in. Keep the hips open. Bring your left hand or maybe the elbow to the inside of that straight leg. Reach your right arm up and over and extend up and out of the right hip and low back. And just breathe.
And then gently bring yourself up. If you're on your, well, you wouldn't be on your back anymore anyway, but we're all coming onto the back. You can swing your legs around. As you lay down on your back, knees to the sky, feet on the floor, you can windshield wipe your knees a little bit side to side. And then bring both knees up into the chest, lower them off to the right, you can scoot your right shoulder blade out from under you, and just reach your left arm out to the side, making a reclined twist. And just soften the midsection into the twist. There's no necessary goal to get the shoulder or knees down. If the shoulder is uncomfortably up, you can reach your left arm back behind you instead of to the side. And if your knees aren't down, you can always straighten the bottom leg out. That might help. Might be a deeper stretch for the back, though. Or wherever you end up, just do your best to soften. And then release, come to center, bring your knees over to the left, and just free up that left shoulder blade. And then reach your right arm out to the side or back behind you. You can even do a couple little half snow angels just to see what's more comfortable. And find your position and soften keeping the breath moving even as it's slowing down. And then bring yourself back to the middle. Hug your knees into the chest. You can rock a little side to side. And just bring the soles of the feet together. Let the knees go wide. Just so that you're pretty comfortably resting into the floor. If you need props underneath your thighs, you can put blocks or blankets or something like that. Or just straighten the legs as you come down into rest. Just let everything soften. Relax your face, the muscles around the eyes and the jaw. Let your arms be heavy, legs heavy, belly soft.
Now, since you're at home or on your own, feel free to rest as long as you'd like. Just let my voice trail off and stay in Shavasana. Otherwise, with your next breath, start to move your fingers and toes around. If it would feel good, you can stretch the arms back overhead, lengthen the whole body out. And then as you exhale, curl up gently onto one side or the other, keeping your eyes closed. And from your side, use your arms and very gently press your way up to an easy seat. A little lift to the chest, shoulders back, take a deep breath in. Hold the breath. If you have room, take a little more air. Hold it. Relax your shoulders down onto the breath. And exhale it out. Namaste. Thank you all for joining me for practice today. Keep an eye out for future classes. Our next class will be Friday for the kind of condensed around 30 to 45 minutes, kind of breaking down some of the concepts in here, working a little more on the shoulders. It is still a full class. It won't be just a little workshoppy, but it will be a little bit more conditioning exercises and breakdown of the different poses. And then Saturday morning will be the advanced version, kind of cum accumulation or culmination, there we go, of the whole week and the shoulders. So we'll do a little bit more challenging and vigorous on Saturday, but they're all ready for replay. I also still have my videos up on Vimeo.com for now. Um, those will be moving over to this site soon, but at the moment they're still all over there. So feel free to watch them, all of the videos that I've made during the whole quarantine since we started. But take care of yourselves, take care of each other. I love you all. I can't wait till we can all practice together in person again someday. And namaste.